<laughs> oh, we're giggling here, boys and girls. We finally made it. Those dang train delays in England. You cannot stop Super Kevin Campbell when he's ready to talk about the Arsenal. Yes, we won again. This is the post-game show a few hours later than subscribed, but better late than never when it comes to the Highbury squad. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, squaddies. Good evening, the legend that is Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. He made it back. Do you know how far I've come to see you, squaddies? You better enjoy this one today, I'm telling you. I've been travelling to and fro and back and forth from 10 to 9 this morning. I've only just got in and I'm going to bring some energy to you, squaddies. Come on, let's have it. <laughs> Super Kev, I'm not sure if you eventually got home on a camel. Oh, you. It was a camel ride, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I love about you? A legend and here you are. We had a commitment tonight and you made it. And you're yes. right, So if We absolutely love Kev. He's got the energy. I'll tell you something. Be ready for tonight. You better nut that button. Let me tell you. On the way in, hit the like button. No, seriously. I've travelled a long way. I've travelled round the country to get here. So the least you could do is hit that like button, especially for that performance yesterday. Come on. Hit it. Nut it. Touch it. Caress it. Make sure you do a Vinny. Do a Vinny and hit it. And especially if you love that result down the road for that lot. <laughs> Super Kev, what a weekend. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for making it and all of your efforts. I mean, I know we're joking, but you did. You've had, it's so crazy that it's taken you 12 hours to get yeah. home. Yes, it has. <laughs> it has. And I was, I was hoping to get home and do a bit and I could chill out a little bit and, wa and watch the footy and do all that kind of thing. No. I wasn't given that privilege. But you know what? I love it that I'm here and we're doing this show because it's a we've had 24 hours or more to kind of digest it, haven't we? We we've have. had to digest it. I so. feel your bravado already. I feel the energy. Oops, this is what happens with these shirts. Sorry, my buttons are popping. Oh, Super steady <laughs> on, steady on, so it's not that it's not that not that time yet, darling. Trust me. <laughs> no. You just make that you just do that with your eyes, Super Kev. You oh, make it no. pop, 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 Well, pop. lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> but um Listen, uh, Soph, this is great. Jamie O'Hara admitted Spurs was shit. What a time to be alive. <laughs> do, you remember we, do you remember we done a show and we said, watch out for these guys when the Arsenal start doing better and the others start messing up because it will come. Let's see their energy. Amazing. Jamie O'Hara admitting it is all right, but he never went at them with the same energy as he did at Arsenal. No, no. He hope... mocked He mocked us, Sophie. Yeah, I hope everyone's <laughs> going to go out with the same energy. How's that mic volume for you now, kids? You let me know um, if that works for you. And thank you very much, um, Kev. Uh, I get, I've got a lot of love for the Sky Sports early kickoff appearance. And do you know what I'm really proud of the most? is Go that on. I know you know and respect this as much as I may have disagreed and criticized Mikel Arteta. When I'm on these shows, I support and I stand up for our club. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, uh, there was a Tottenham person on and, you know, like in previous shows, I claimed that we would finish above them this season. And I still believe that we're going to do that. And mm -hmm. I think that um, it's coming. I really do. I think I think it's coming this season. I th I think that it's possible, Kev. Of course, Sophie. Do you know if the question I asked you at the earlier in the season was, "What do you want from this season?" And you quite rightly said you want consistency. Mm -hmm. Now, 
we understand consistency in performance itself because we all want the, we always want the team to play well. But the key to it is getting results. We want that we want the back to back results to cement where we're supposed to be. And if you could get both, Sophie, you've cracked it. All right, let's get stuck into it, shall we? Uh, it was really and it has been quite an amazing uh, weekend. You know, the only the only down part is that West Ham didn't lose. But let's be honest, West Ham are on a mission right now. And they're a team that are also playing and are resurgent in a similar way to ours in that everybody was killing the West Ham ownership. Everybody was killing um, the owners for hiring David Moyes. David Moyes was a vilified character when he first took over West Ham. They went through some really dark times. There were West Ham fans that weren't even showing up at the Olympic Stadium. And I think similarly to us, Kev, we've gone through a trajectory that is definitely comparable, but of obviously with a rookie manager and not as much of an experienced manager. Similarly with Manchester United, look what they've done. Uh, I don't know the I, I don't have the data here. I know we've probably spent more money than West Ham, but we certainly have not spent more money than Manchester United. Uh, and both going through topsy turvy times after replacing legendary managers. So mm -hmm. let's start with the game, right? And you know what, nobody Clark, Nobby Clark, it has been an amazing turnaround. At the beginning of the season, we were all crying, screaming, punching having fits, let's be honest, we were about yeah. three games, zero points, Kev, and zero goals. And, can and you, you know, take me back to that moment, Kev? I can, Sophie, and I think it's really important we never forget it. Let me tell you why. Because we saw everything that was wrong about this Arsenal side and squad. We saw capitulation. We saw an inability to dig in. We saw an inability to be together as a team. We saw players bail out and get sent off. We saw no threat at the top end of the pitch, no cohesion. And I got called deluded talking about players crossing that white line. And it's easy to point the finger at the manager, but we weren't very good in the first three games, Sophie. We've got to admit it. We weren't very good. But we did say when we got to that international break, he brought the players in and we said, now it's his team, Sophie. Yes. We said that on here. Now it's his team. He's got three games, we said. I even said, Sophie, they'll probably get him the sack, didn't I? That's what I said. Because yes. if they're not performing to the way that they're supposed to, they'll probably get him the sack. But Sophie, let's be honest. It started off slow. We got a 1-0 win against Norwich. Some good defending. Then we go to Burnley, which is a place where you've got to dig in. We get another 1-0 victory with a great goal from Martin Odegaard. And then we play, the, the, we play Spurs... The game which was really, is either going to make or break him to us. We win that game after playing for probably 35, 40 minutes, outstanding. And then we manage the, the rest of the game. You know, a couple of hairy moments, but we got there in the end. But we have seen this team start to come together, Sophie. We have seen it start to come together. And we do want them to be as consistent as possible. And the last two games, Sophie... He's tinkered with the team, but there seems to be the partnerships and togetherness that we've lacked for such a long time, Sophie. <clears throat> Kev, such you, a long time. I completely agree with you. And I, I wanted to put Kenyon Guna's comment up before we get into the game and the player ratings um, for yesterday. And 400 of you in live chat this Sunday evening, I even though the clocks have gone back. <laughs> even the clocks couldn't help me today. <laughs> <laughs> Even the gods couldn't help me today, I tell you. Um, hit that like button and subscribe if you like what you hear. This is really important because I've been wanting to ask you this, Kev. If you guys remember on a Tuesday-ish club about two and a half months ago, Super Kev and David Hillier said, play a 4-4-2. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Don't try and overcomplicate things. And it can be almost an inverted 442 because it can be adaptable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, Kev, is the $6 million question because ever since we've adapted to what, what some people think it's a 442 inverted as a 4231 or whatever it is, I defer to you because mm -hmm. I think this has simplified everything. Yes, it has, Sophie. But here is the million dollar puzzle. It is not 442 when we're attacking. It can be 4231, 4222, 451. It all depends. The key is when we lose the ball, Sophie. When we lose the ball, mm -hmm. four, four, two. That's the key to it all. Because everybody knows their jobs. You see Abamyang and Lacazette working together as a front two, dealing with the back four. You see Smith Rowe and Saka knowing their roles, when to go, when not to go, being controlled by Tomiyasu and Tavares. Tavares. This is what it's about. The partnerships. Gabriel and Ben White, if people don't see that partnership going from strength to strength, something is wrong. They must have a different agenda to what I see. Because Jamie Vardy always scores against Arsenal. Oh, Where was it? Back, it was in the... Back, it's my back pocket, Kev. I'm just... Uh, sorry. I was just yeah. looking for him. He's in the back pocket. And, and let's be honest, Leicester brought on all of their weapons. <laughs> didn't they? They brought on all Harvey Barnes. They brought well, Lookman. Uh, they brought on Paxton. They, they had everybody on there. They brought Harvey Barnes and Lookman on at half time. That's how at much we disrupted them. That's exactly. the beauty. That's where, for me, Arteta gets credit. When you have a team that goes out, right, that is a totally mm -hmm. different team with DNA and culture, because it is the players, they're totally different. They're yeah. tougher, they're harder, they care more, they have respect for the badge, they have respect for each other, they have a fight for each other, they have a whole different attitude and commitment, Kevin. Mm -hmm. But when you have to make the other manager adapt his tactics at half time and bring on two subs, I'm sorry, credit where credit is due, right? And I wanted to put this up because a very brave Spurs fan who keeps coming into our channel says i didn't recognize arsenal yesterday someone's hypnotized the team they're actually playing like a team painful to watch as a spurs fan to be honest <laughs> i mean ethelston continues to be brave kev and comes into this environment and fair play to him sophie fair play to him for doing that fair play to him but you know what sophie we said what we 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 questioned they're weak source. They're not strong enough. They're this, they're that. Sophie, they've dug in. The players have dug in. And I'm sure it is painful for Ethelston to see it because you know what? He don't want to see Arsenal resurgent. That's what we want. And we know we're not quite there yet. But Sophie, we talked about hurdles to get over. This mm -hmm. team need to meet the challenge and get over a hurdle. That was a huge hurdle. For, for me, Kev, too, I think it's important that, you know, um, when you look at the fact that we've always said once he has a team in his image, how many times have we said that on our show? The too character, many. the personality, <laughs> the tenacity, the credibility, all of it, right? Until he can turn that around... We're never going to see the true Arsenal under Arteta, right? True, yeah. Well, here we yes. are now, okay? Yeah. And you and I aren't getting excited because we know that it's still only November tomorrow and we mm -hmm. have another six, seven months left of this season with a lot of yeah. tough games coming up, right? Of course. But the evolution of the team, when you do have players who have a totally different mental attitude. You've talked about mental this whole time. Before I get stuck into like tactics and how mm -hmm. things worked and didn't, Kev, 
the mental attitude. You know, a player like Shamak comes in, he's not going to change the DNA of the dressing room. You know, a player like Javino comes in, he's not going to change that. A player like Sogradis come in, I'm sorry, as much as I love him, he's not going to change that. Mustafi's not going to change that. Ozil is not going to change that. Lacazette has helped evolve that. Mm -hmm. And you can see players responding to him. Aubameyang has started to overcome the obstacles and you can see there's a difference between the connectivity with him and the players and how they're responding to him. Definitely. We'll get to Ramsdale, Ben White, Gabriel, Tommy Yasu, even Sambi, captain of Anderlecht at 21, I bring it up. Kev, we always said until the DNA and the culture and the mental stability of players evolves, mm -hmm. we are never going to evolve as a club. Mm -hmm. True. And we've seen it falter time after time after time. One of our favourite sayings on here was, we don't know which Arsenal are going to turn up, Sophie. Mm -hmm. One thing we do know, there's a lot of people, I remember a few weeks ago, a lot of people saying that, you know, that Mikel Arteta's lost the dressing room and the players ain't playing for him. And it's nonsense. The key is the players have to go out and execute the game plan. And that's what we're seeing them do, Sophie. I mean... It, when you think about the mental side, and I'm not saying we're playing, we're not, we're not playing at the levels there that we know, you know, the, the invincibles were or anything like that. But you know what's quite refreshing, Sophie? It's refreshing to see players that weren't doing so well previously, all of a sudden finding their feet and finding their roles and knowing what they're doing and looking like a team and being tough to beat and putting their bodies on the line. That's what we want. And then at the end of the game, I don't want to jump too far, but at the end of the game, Sophie, the way those players appreciated the away fans made me very proud. They were unbelievable, the away fans. And I know there's a whole argument going on about chanting about AFTV, and I do not want to focus on that, you guys. That's a whole other conversation. And of course, we don't want anyone kind of being abused or whatever, but I just want to focus on the fans. I'm here in my living room in the United States of America, and I can hear their voices clearly one by one by one mm -hmm. from the minute whistle, Kev, to the end. And our fans this season who have been going to the games and our fans from all corners of this earth have represented and the sensible fans have supported this club. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, the fans overpowered Leicester yesterday, like Mike Tyson in his heyday, 30 seconds in, but Sophie, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson style. Everybody comes with the game plan. Once they feel the power, oh, hold on a minute. Their game plan goes out the window. That's what we've done to Leicester. That's why they had to change. All right. So, um, Jerry, thanks. I, I'm happy you feel about this. We're always honest on this show, right? Um, and I am, I have, I have been very critical of Mikel Arteta and I think it's been warranted since he started in terms of the Premier League. He doesn't get any criticism from me in the FA Cup. He does in the Premier League and the Europa mm -hmm. League semi-final. And mm -hmm. I feel it's been warranted, but the majority of our listeners here have never been abusive. They've always just come from a place of care, right? But you also have to be ready to oi, eat oi, your humble oi, pie. Oi, what, what, what place of care? They weren't caring to me, calling me deluded Campbell oh, and all well, that. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to that, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> when you... <laughs> They generally, when they're talking about their club, they come from a place of care. But you have been exceptionally critical of Super Kevin Campbell when he has said, it's the players, it's the players, it's the players. And he's always been consistent and stood by the fact that we've never had the right players, the right mentality. Super Kev, everyone's waiting for you to just brock them up a little bit. It's but they're already early. broke up now. They're already <laughs> broke up. I've travelled far to come and broke them up. And they're already broken up. Sophie, 
listen, it, here's the key, right? Here's the key. <laughs> and the Nailing fans, <laughs> listen, the fans, the fans love their club just like I love the club. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the inside and you know how it goes, I know it's the players. Nobody can tell me it's not the players. Maybe they think it's the manager. It's not. It's the players. Like I've always said, the players will get the manager to sack or the players will get the manager held in high esteem. Because or every manager sets their teams up to win. But it's the players who have to execute and this is what our problem has been all the time. We haven't been able to execute. And now we're starting to see the players execute. It's that simple. So as deluded as I am, Sophie, <laughs> as deluded as I am, I'm waiting for some of the squaddies in the chat to admit that it's the players. That's what I want to see. Let's because see. those players make us proud they really do um and harvey's saying does it matter who's right or who's wrong I no it's not no. a matter of who's right or wrong but the key is the players yeah the play if if the players don't go out there and perform guys the manager could the manager could say and try what he wants yes neil says we've won the fight but not the war well said neil this is the start this is the beginning this is the entry. You know, right. like in a movie, you've got the first act, the middle act, and then the end. End, yep. We're in the first act right now of Mikel Arteta's true Arsenal Football Club. Yes. And we're going to know a lot more by January, February, and then that final act where generally we go on a run and we love to play. Mm -hmm. And how wonderful would it be, Kevin, to see him mix it up and rid us of this November hangover that we've had for so many years. This is the key now, is it not? It is, and November, we have some juicy games, some big hurdles, Sophie, to overcome. The next big hurdle, believe it or not, is Watford. Why is it Watford? Yeah, Watford ain't the greatest team, but that's the next game. Exactly. Off the back of two good wins, an international break approaching, can we go and get that win? get that win it's important and look they smashed your former um club and then they ended up losing this weekend look at the yes. balance look what's happened in the premier league this weekend you guys city lost to patrick vieira's palace how, how, does it make oh. our result terrible oh, now let me, let me finish sorry so, I'm so sophie i'm so energetic sorry <laughs> you know where i'm going with this yes i do <laughs> we were ripped for being schooled by Patrick Vieira. I even did a segment saying two average managers battling it out. Okay? I'm always going to tell my truth. Yes. Then, look at the result, Brighton at Anfield. We ripped our team to shreds, every single one of us, talking about how Brighton was schooling us. And then you look at, we smashed Tottenham to smithereens. And then United, who was smashed to smithereens by Liverpool, go and smash Tottenham. Kevin. L listen, here's the thing. If we were 2-0 up against a team at home and we drew, drew two each, what would they be saying? What would our fan base... Our fan base would be in meltdown. That Liverpool for all their power, are 2-0 up at Anfield and can't get the job done against Brighton. Manchester City, who hadn't conceded a goal at home, Sophie, lose to Crystal Palace. And the sending off in the Palace game was exactly the same challenge that Johnny Evans done on Aubameyang. One got move, sent Kev. off, one got a yellow. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous, Sophie. But this is the league, and it's the Premier League where on any given Saturday or game day, anyone could beat you. So that's why the players have to be focused in 
every time. Totally agree with you. And Arnie, yeah, I mean, that was a total red card. Any, if, if we said to like, I know that Jack is a polarizing figure, but if he does that or David Luiz had done that in the past, that's a, that's a red card. Um, and, so, and yes. So do you reckon if Ben White or Gabriel done that to Vardy, that they'd, they'd be on the pitch? Yeah. But you know what, they, Kim? They've got a red. Here's what we're going to do. We're growing, we're going to grow our respect. This is what I want, right? This is the, the end game and the trajectory. 771 of you in live chat right now. Please hit that like button, hit subscribe. You know, um, I've just sent you a picture there, Soph, to your you phone. You sent me a picture to my phone? Yeah I've, yeah, I've just sent you a picture to your phone. Okay. Um, and, um, damn, I left my phone in the bedroom. The no, never mind. I don't bring my phone. We, we could do it tomorrow. That's okay. one for tomorrow then. We okay. could do that tomorrow. But the, the point is, is that, you know, if we'd have lost 2-0 at home to Crystal Palace and had a player sent off and played with so much ill discipline, we would have got ripped to shreds. But because it's City, it's reputation, right? Liverpool, it's reputation. Chelsea, it's reputation. They're more respected than we are. And we have to earn back that respect and not everyone is willing to give it to us yet, Kevin. But would you agree that those decisions, they do start to fluctuate a little bit when the officials, when everyone starts looking at a team with respect? And I don't care what anyone says. We see it at Anfield. We see it at Old Trafford. We see it at Stamford Bridge. We see it at the Etihad. It, it, am I off, off balance here, Kev? No. No, you're not off balance. Sophie, Sophie, one thing about this hybrid squad, which people like love us for, or like us or whatever, hit the like button, everybody, is we tell it like as we see it. Everything on the football pitch must be earned. Everything. Fan base has to connect with team. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to connect, or else you have a disconnect. And that's how we've been for such a long time, Sophie. All right, so I want to get to the game, uh, Kev, and I, I I started to download pictures of all the players, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to download 10 of one player. But there were two that were sensational, in my opinion, and one that continues to just show that he's top draw. Um, <laughs> I think these this, this, this young man um, has been one of the most impressive signings of Arsenal in, in a long time, if I'm honest with you. And do you know what, Sophie? It is such a key position, and that was such a key save. That really was. Because you know what? If they get a goal just before half-time... It's a different ball game, man. It's a diff, totally different ball game. It really is. I mean, the save was sensational. He, get, he gets up as well, and... Obviously, it hits him and stays out, so it's another save. It's and then Thomas save. Partey, yeah, it's a double save, and then Thomas Partey clears it. I mean, that's one of the best saves I've ever seen, so far, if I'm honest with you. That is up there with so many great saves. He's mad at a match, for sure he was mad at a match. But I think that man he's with there make a huge difference to our football team, so these, these two, two make a huge difference. These really two, do. Kev. Eight games, five wins, zero losses since Mr. Rambo 2.0 has joined. And then seeing these two hug like this, these two, my goodness, when you talk about... Do you know Ben White's in there somewhere? He is. There's his tattoos. Those <laughs> you can his see arms. his arm. Yeah, you can see his arm. He's, <laughs> He's in like, this. I'm, I'm part of this. I had a pretty decent game. Yeah, you're not um, wrong. 815 of you in live chat hit that like button for us if you love our club and you love where we're going no matter what you've thought where you've been who you've criticized what you've said coming together in this moment and appreciating these players who were vilified when they were signed in the summer Aaron Ramsdale was ripped through the coals by a lot of Arsenal fans, but we are not here to point the finger. What we're here to say is you always have to give new signings a chance, Kevin, a yes. chance. Uh, Sophie, I've been on air with you and I've, we've spoken about 
that badge weighing heavy on players. We've talked about what it's like to play for the Arsenal. Forget the name on the back. It's the person in the shirt that has to do the work and impress the fan base so they take better notice of the name on the back. Remember, Ben White didn't start very well. Ramsdale was vilified before he'd even put the shirt, before he'd even signed. Etc, etc. But you know what? You look at the performances and you look at these young men who are coming together. We're the youngest squad in the Premier League, Sophie. Our challenge is to keep it going, obviously. And there are bigger tests ahead. But, you know, if we hadn't got through the Leicester test, it would be easy for people to just take it back, wouldn't it? And say, yes. we ain't ready yet. Look, you know, Arteta can't get it right. The team ain't this, the team ain't that. Credit goes to them players, Sophie. Credit goes to them players. Kev, you've been in a game where you have played your mind out of your mind, shooting, headering. Everything. Everything, everything goes everything. together. But the goalkeeper... <laughs> is just having a out, world it was it was 10 out of 10. it was and, there's, there's nothing else to say it was 10 out of 10. and our, our good friend of the show jason cundy was a little bitter about it if <laughs> i had to be I, polite to our friend jay i mean he's like <laughs> what are you guys talking about this overreaction this save because everyone keeps saying the ball started swirling back towards him N no i'm sorry <laughs> kev Sophie, let, let me tell you something. Remember, we're dealing with the media here. <laughs> and they do not like us being happy, Sophie. They can't be happy for us. They can't just let us, let us be. They have to turn the knife, turn the screw. But you know what, Sophie? I love it. I absolutely love it. Let them squirm. <laughs> Kev, do you, know, do you know what I love the most? About Go him. On. Oh my gosh. I love do you remember when I said to you, I don't want badass players. I just want players with a little bit of shit housery in them. Oh yeah. They know oh, yeah. the line. Kieran Tierney is great at doing that, right? Mm -hmm. I think that um Aaron Ramsdale is gonna be a genius at doing that. Cause when Leicester fans behind him were saying, singing Yo <laughs> ah, and he's giving <laughs> And he's Get getting in it. there. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll it's just keep so saving good. it. I'll it's just keep so saving it. I'm, I'm, I'd send you home unhappy. Fantastic. That's what it's about. Sophie, when you go away from home and you're Arsenal, remember, it's, it's the team, the management team, and the away fans all together. Totally. You are an enemy territory, and you're coming in to get them points and leave. Exactly, Kev. And you know, my boy Demsek here makes another great point. I was worried about that half because I'm like, he's not wearing a hat and he's looking mm -hmm. into the sun and the sun was piercing. And there were moments where, you know, we started giving away a couple of corners towards the end of the first half. They started like, you know, adding some, some pressure, getting some opportunities. Mm -hmm. And Kev, not only was the free kick, Brendan Rogers thought it went in. Mikel Arteta... Yeah thought it went in everybody behind the goal thought it went in and the fact that he was looking into the sun as well kevin mm -hmm. and i'm sorry he's not as tall as a lot of other goalkeepers either but his flexibility the way he's able to elongate his body he's agile isn't he very agile very Amazing. agile very athletic and Te it's it's a sensational sophie let me tell you something how many times have you seen Goalkeepers get a hand to it, but it still goes in. They just push it in the net. The wrist was strong. Obviously, it saved it, hit the bar, came down, and then was alert to get back up and put the, stri put the striker off. Exactly. Put the player off who's going to look to put the, the rebound in. Totally it was a sensational double save. And the, I don't think he gets enough credit for the no, double save. No, the second one was... I mean, how he was able to get down as quickly and, and, and respond as quickly. And then his partner in crime, Gabriel, just making sure that business was taken care of. Well, Thomas right. Partey, that was. Thomas Partey, sorry. Yeah, and, yeah, Thomas uh, yeah, Partey got care back, of, yeah. Uh, business taken care of. 
Uh, and I love these comments, uh, Public Enemy, um, Beast Mode. We've got Beast Mode players, Gabrielle, Ramsdale, Thomas Party. They are, Tommy Yasu, they are fearless Beast Mode players that aren't going to take shit from no one for nothing, right? Yep, yep. And I love that. Kev, why don't you take us through the rest of the, the squad and let's see what you think. I've been dying to know what you've thought. Um, as dominant as we were in the first half, we did have some shady moments in the second, but when you've taken a lead like that against a team away from home, you're going to soak up the pressure. I'd love for you to talk me through that a little bit. Sophie, before the, before the game kicks off, the manager and the team want to get their noses in front, Sophie. They want to get a lead. Gabriel comes up with a, a, a towering header. Fantastic. 1-0, great celebration. Arsenal fans, crazy. Then we go into our shape, bring Leicester, Leicester onto us, and then the counter-attack starts, Soph. We go on a counter-attack, Emil Smith roll, makes up ground, Lacazette gets on the ball in the box, they, out, they crowd Lacazette out, but the ball drops to Smith roll, and any good midfielder following up, strikes it in the corner, 2-0. It's 2-0, Sophie. We're in the lead. All of a sudden, Leicester are chasing the game. And it plays into our hands. Do you know what I saw from the team? I saw Tomiyasu's distance is right. Tavares' distance is right. The mm. partnership of, of, of Gabriel and Ben White, correct. If you look at what happened really edge of the box, you had Lokonga and Partey. They were pretty close. Any ball that was trying to get played in between them, they were kind of blocking it. They were held any ball into the front. They were turning around and trying to nick it off the front. That was team play. And then when Leicester had to try and play around, you had to try and get around Lacazette and Aubameyang. And the job Smith Rowe and Saka were doing at times, they were extra fullbacks at times, Sophie. But that's what you can do as a 4-4-2. You can be solid. You can go deep. But when we got it, we broke. Second half, Obviously, they brought on weapons, didn't they? They had to change because if it would have gone on with the same team, we would have gone three, probably four up. So they had to change. They had to put more pressure on us. Bringing Harvey Barnes, who we know is a good player, creates a different problem for Tomiyasu because all of a sudden, there's more forward players at the top end of the pitch. We sit off a little bit because, do you know what? We've got something to hold on to. We don't mind catching them on the break. But, you know, they ask questions of us, Sophie. Mm -hmm. And we stood up. Yes, Aaron Ramsdale had to make some, some real quality saves. But they, you, you are not going to control Leicester City for 90 minutes. No chance. They are going to get some opportunities. But our goalkeeper was 10 out of 10. Let's, our defending was very good. Our defending was 9 out of 10. But our goalkeeper was 10 out of 10, So. Absolutely, 100%. But you've also said a long time, for a long time, Kev, that you want Aubameyang and Lacazette pl to play together as a, front two. Yeah. as a front two. You made it clear about the 4-4-2, like I said, with Hillier a couple of months ago. And you've always said that... Um, I want to sound. I want this to sound respectful. They're men, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of younger men in the team. And some who are boys becoming men. Mm -hmm. And the two of them for me, when Obama Yang is this Obama Yang and not last season's Obama Yang, it's very much a reminder of our build up to that FA Cup final, how they played together, how they interacted together, how they bounced off together. Even you can tell from their Insta posts and stuff like that, the two of them just love playing off each other. There's something that Mikel has embraced about that. What do you think is the trigger for that and why, Kev? What has Mikel I, seen? That's I think different? he's yeah, I think he's I think Mikel Arteta's challenged. He's rooted out all the the, the, the the bad ones. You know, the people who could undermine it. And now the challenge for Aubameyang isn't just to be the goal scorer and lead by example that way. He's got to let not only his football, but his presence and energy lead. And he needs a sidekick, Sophie. 
he needs Lacazette with him. Mm. And Lacazette does a lot of the dirty work. I tell you, him getting that ball in midfield and making the team play, you see it again against Leicester. They can't handle himself. They couldn't handle when the ball goes into him, it sticks and he makes it happen. So we can get Saka we can get Smith Rowan, we could get Partey and Lokonga up, we could get the back four up the pitch. It's so important. But he needed that sidekick. And what we're seeing, we're seeing Aubameyang leading by example. We're seeing Lacazette doing what Lacazette does, but Lacazette, even more so now, is being that team player that we know we can be. And people will see more now because we're winning. Mm -hmm. but we've said it all along, Sophie. Lacazette is key to what we do. He I've really is. Said, and Kev, as you know, I've always said he's our Bobby Firmino. You know, they may not get as many goals, but what they do on and off the ball. And you said last season, he goes, we're terrible. You said, you kept saying, oh my God, I can't carry on watching this. We're so awful off the ball. The last few games, we've been so much better off the off ball. Off the ball, yes. Which off is the ball running is hard. It's hard. It's easy when you've got the ball and you just stand there and you get a pass. That's why we've been so slow. But now, our boys are covering distance, Sophie. They're running not 10 yards. They're running 30, 40 yards. Smith Rowe, you look at anybody who gets the opportunity, look where we won the ball and look where Smith Rowe travels from to score the second goal travels 60 70 yards he travels distance that's the difference sophie against villa he traveled distance he was in his own half played and he ran through this is what we need we need guys to understand where the space is understand the football and to execute and we've been executing and we our defense has been Near on impregnable. This, this is this is what we've needed, Kev. This is yeah. what we've been screaming for: is to have a Patrick Vieira in midfield and to have a defence like we used to, and which Arsenal was always built on. And one of the things I want to ask you too is that, you know, um, what I like about the off the ball times is when we've got a corner and the ball comes a little up the halfway line. And I wanted you to explain this to me. In the last two or three games, maybe the last two games, especially Villa and Leicester, our wingbacks have stayed in the moment. There's not been a panic to revert back. You know, so if we do win that second ball mm -hmm. and we get possession back, they're already ahead of the game and they're in positions that can cause a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. uh, am I right Trust. in thinking that we've done that a little bit differently when we're in a in a set piece mode or an attacking mode and it and we're kind of sticking with it a little bit more than, it's than trust, we were sophie it's trust because you know something sophie if the ball pops out and you don't trust the guy mm. the player to get hold of the ball so hold it up and then play well you are not gonna trust and go what we're seeing now is our players breaking. They mm. are busting a gut to get to the ball and get beyond it. So do you know what that does for the opposition, Sophie? The opposition just want you to be there. They don't want you to break and be running 60, 70 yards so they have to chase you. But the key is, whether it's a Lacazette or a Bamiang or whoever, we are playing football and we're passing it yesterday to a yellow shirt so we can get up that pitch and create an overload against the opposition and we're doing that very well okay very cool um i would also like to say kev a player that's been vilified um a lot this season and it's mostly because of his price tag and everyone wants instant gratification but continually i see ben white taking risks and bringing the ball out of the back and yes, I'm going to keep reminding people that I said he could be better than Harry Maguire one day. And I truly believe that partnerships better each other, don't they? They enhance each other. Gabriel is making him better. Mm -hmm. His stability in some regards is making Gabriel better. They offset each other's weaknesses. You mm -hmm. and Wrighty combined beautifully for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, you were able to show Wayne Rooney the way for a reason, you know, he was like this bull in a china shop when he first came out. 
and there's 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 these refinements in these moments with partnerships kev rio ferdinand Vid, vidic we saw mm -hmm. that our own back four that we've seen mm -hmm. in the past am i am i right in thinking that you know they are bringing the best out of each other but gabrielle is especially a beast we know but ben white deserves some credit here too 100 percent, sophie and you're right ben white got plenty of stick don't forget he played in the brentford game first game of the season and you know he's not this he's not good in the air he can't do this he can't everyone was telling us what he can and what he can't do but you know what they never said they never said what he can do the great thing is now we get his partner we said when gabriel comes back they need to form a partnership we saw in that picture three of them the goalkeeper and the two center backs hugging that is a triangle a, a trio that is key to our success they mm -hmm. are key to our success and let's be honest we thought to ourselves jamie vardy oh he's going to cause us murders he's going to cause us problems and ian natural these guys have been on form these guys have been formed guys. Then you, then you bring Harvey Barnes. Then you bring on uh, Pax and Dakar as well, etc. These guys are these guys. So you've got five attacking players on the pitch, Sophie. Sophie, and we see it through. This is big, big performances. It really is. And it's true, like everyone's saying. And by the way, yes, we will be covering Arsenal women. There'll be a roundup on that later on this week, um, you guys as well. And Ramsdale is the back. Look, when you look at Liverpool, Allison, they've got a Jedi on the mountain. Man City, Edison, a Jedi on the mountain. Chelsea, look what Mendy has done since he's come in, Kevin. They are a completely different football team. Sophie, they trust Mendy in the net. You could see they trust him. They trust to give him the ball to his feet. They trust him when he's coming for crosses. And you know what it does, Sophie? We, we said this about, we hope Ramsdale could have a, a, you know, a good game, especially in the Burnley game, because he could take the pressure off the defence. And that's what he does. Crosses are coming in and he comes and claims crosses. He doesn't punch stuff, he, he claims it. It makes a huge difference to the back four because then they can get up. Mm -hmm. It makes the opposition think twice about crossing the ball. Kev, we took, you know, everyone was talking about Villa's midfield, right? And obviously we hadn't beaten Villa since Unai Emery yep. and we nullified that. We also took their speed completely away from them on the flanks in, yep. in that match. We talked about Tillemans and Didi, whoever was going to play. Um, Samari. Uh, Samari. Samara and Madison. And Madison. We completely took away their superpowers. Now, did they have chances? Yes. But the difference with this Arsenal versus the old Arsenal is we combated those chances. Yes. And we defended as a unit, as a team. I want to bring up one other player before we start darting out. And then we'll do a quick round um, mm -hmm. player rating because we will be back tomorrow night where we'll get stuck into a lot of your comments and questions, you guys. So keep them coming. If you're listening on replay, throw them in because it's we'll a long way till tomorrow. Kevin says on Friday. So we'll yeah. deal with some of them tomorrow about this particular game. Um, Kev, <laughs> I'm just going to let you tell everyone what your thoughts are on this young man. Sophie, here's the truth of the matter. People could say I'm crazy. He came in and early season, he looked raw, didn't he? He looked raw. He looks to be a lot more composed now. He's so direct, quick and dangerous. And you know what he does? He recognizes where the space is. So he doesn't just go down the line. He cuts on the inside. He chops it and cuts on the inside. Nobody can catch him. He... He's creating attacks from that left back spot by running inside. We've seen Ben White carry the ball out the back. But I think this, this Tavares guy, I think he's special. I really do. And there might be a time where him and Kieran Tierney actually play together on that left-hand side. 
because oh, one up front, one one ahead. One in or... midfield, yeah. I, I think because if you're playing a four four two, I think Tavares can play one ahead of Kieran Tierney. A bit like when Gareth Bell Bow was more of moved, a left moved. back, and then yes. Harry Redknapp transitioned moved him. him. I think Tavares right side Wenger made him. I think Tavares yeah. could play left side midfield. I really do. Because when Kieran Tierney goes forward, Tavares is comfortable to sit behind him as a left back. When Kieran Tierney gets back, Tavares goes ahead. I think that can dovetail pretty sweet because this boy, has, this, he's got some speed. He's got tenacity. Don't, who took him on, Sophie? Who actually even tried to take him on? He's fearless, Kev. He is. He's tough. He's fearless, and I don't want to go too over the top with him because I know he's a young player, and he will have his times where he's not so great, Sophie. But all I'm saying is, when he first started, he looked a bit raw. He's looking a lot more refined right now, Sophie. I've got to say, he doesn't look like a, a raw left back anymore. He looks quite accomplished. And you have to say that's a good sign because clearly there's things going on in training, things yes. working with the team, playing with the players that he is, refining him. Because mm -hmm. I think it was Akram who said that a lot of the um, his former club fans, Akram, you're correct, were telling us that we got a mess of a player. But he's proving them wrong. And of course, environment is everything. Who you play with is everything. Look at Ramsdale. He was part of two teams that were relegated. But that doesn't mean he was a bad goalkeeper. He's yeah. not responsible for the collectiveness of a team. And I think that's the beauty of this. And I will give at this point, Kev, a lot of credit to Adu. Mm -hmm. Because even, you know, Arteta wasn't hot on Tomiyasu, but he kind of put his foot down on some of these signings. This this guy's gonna work, you know. He made the he made certain signings work, but then also the manager has to make them work within how he wants to play, mm -hmm. and the players have to be up for all of that too. So, you know, we always talk about we've com I've criticized the manager. You've said it's the players, but at the end of the day, everything has to come together at mm -hmm. some point to make it work. Now, you and I are not saying that we're there. At no, we're all. not. We're not. But when we've been rock bottom, Kevin, and you see these signs, you scrape against Norwich, you scrape against Burnley, you get out of jail with Brighton, you smash your rivals, you then beat a, a Villa team that everyone's been lauding for two years, and then you annihilate Leicester City, who have won the Premier League more recently than you, won the FA Cup, and also have a manager that supposedly is going to go and take over like X, Y, and Z team. I think those are good. Okay, progress. Tick, the ticking box. Tick the boxes. Yeah, tick the boxes. Tick the boxes for sure. There's a, there's still a few more boxes to be ticked, Sophie. And let's let's be brutally honest, Sophie. Brutally honest. Remember when Edu came out and done that piece, and it, it, a lot of people criticised him for coming out, and he wouldn't commit. He said, "Let's see how things go." Let's just see. Now we've got players in. Let's see how things go. I think he's been, he's been proven pretty right, Edu, in the, the players that they've brought in. And we know we're not there yet. Because what yeah. did he say, Sophie? He said, we've signed players and we need to get to a certain stage and then we bring in the top players. Yes. And I, I had said, I thought that it was the other way around. So, George, thank you for your um, comment as well. Uh, he said that Tomiyasu and Ramsdale were Arteta and Adu was um, Tavares. Uh, but I thought it was the other way around. Either way, I'm happy they're here. They have to come together, yeah. Yeah, it, it, but thank you for correcting me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all, all, regardless, the scouting, these players you know, that a lot of people were really upset about. Now the goal, Kevin, is, and I agree with you, Arnie, let's get those likes up. Now the goal, Kevin, is to do this, is to not go and get annihilated by Liverpool, but... And well, also, we've got Watford next. We got No, but we've got Watford, we've got to win that, then we got Liverpool, win that. Then and we got then Newcastle, we got Liverpool, then we got Man United. Let's not jump too far. Okay, all right, one at a time. Sophie, let's not jump too far. We know what the Liverpool, what we need to do against Liverpool. We know. 
We need to be in the game. We need to be doing things properly. We need to be tough. We need to challenge them. We need to defend as a team properly. And when we get the opportunity to catch them on the break, we need to absolutely execute because you will not get many opportunities. We see Brighton do it. 2-0 down and come back 2-2. Stunned Anfield. Are they further along the line than us? I don't think so, but their confidence is high at Brighton. Let's deal with Watford first. Let's deal with Watford first. We need another three points before the international break, Sophie. Let's get them. Let's get them in. And then we have to hope and pray when our players go away and then come back, we come back and get together and then we're playing Liverpool. At Amph- it's, it's, a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Totally. So can I just say one more thing about our run Absolutely. Because we haven't covered it. His distribution ch- is changing everything. Because I don't know if you've noticed, when the ball comes to his feet and he pings balls into, fo- into Lacazette or Aubameyang, and they could just touch it off one touch and that's setting up attacks. That is beating the press of the opposition. There was a pass, I think it was 25 or 6 minutes in, Kev, to Aubameyang. You know which one I'm talking about, right? Ping. Ping. The, ping. Incredible. He's got, gr- he's got great feet. He's got great distribution. It Th- makes a difference helped, to us. This so. is what helped Edison. This is yeah. what, so this is the part where I under, where I res, I have more when I, my thought process with Mikel is understanding a little bit more and digging deep into his experiences there, where I feel like he's tried to do things that he did there with a team that isn't as talented, but now he's got his own players. He's trying because Edison has been just as much of an outfield player for Man City, Kev. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I mean, seriously. 100%. I mean, Edison... He can play any pass. And if you overcommit, Sophie, he'll ping one right over the top for a striker going through on goal. Exactly. So what does it do? It keeps the opposition honest. They cannot over press because he will beat them. So they have to, they have to be wary. And that is a good <laughs> sign. And listen, I don't want to wish injury upon anyone, but sometimes a manager is forced into making changes, Kev. Mm -hmm. And the Xhaka thing that we've all said at times where he's missed in this team. Um, Kieran Tierney has been out of form, let's be honest. Nuno stepped in. Nobody wants anyone injured, but sometimes a manager's forced into doing things, Kev. Mm-hmm. And it always works out for the betterment of the team. And sometimes it doesn't. And in our case, especially in that midfield, where we have much more of a command, much more control, much more discipline, less sh- less shithousery of the red, red card kind. Mm-hmm. It's working out just fine yeah. for us right now. Without a shadow of a doubt, Sophie, I think you heard me say about the partnership between Lukonga and Partey. Partey needs a partner in there who can do his job and be offensive in his play, play forward. Xhaka, when he's there, he kind of slows it down. He plays sideways, sideways a lot of the time, you know, just to keep things ticking over. Lukonga gets the ball and looks forward and plays forward. That speeds us up. That's really important to us. I love these two together in the midfield and I just hope they can keep it together. The next hurdle is Watford. Yep. Let's go and beat Watford. Those are the games, Kev. Those Those are are the games games that are potential banana skins for us. Yeah. And just, man, you're right. There used to be clear and obvious ways to beat us, and it didn't seem hard to execute against us. He's changed that. Teams think twice about pressing. Got to give credit where credit is due. And someone asked me if my humble pie is cooking on high. Super Kev said that it still needs to be on a low temperature because it's only November. But as the months go on, I'll crank it up. I'll crank it up. up. Tony's (laughs) ready to serve it here, live and direct. (laughs) Lovely. I love it. Love it. 
All right, a brilliant show this evening. Um, please go over to Lee Judges TV right now and check out our friends um, over at Lee Judges. We also have a premiere kitting you up at 10 p.m. That's right. The Highbury Squad is not done. We've got a premiere of a new C series, Get Off the Potsy, hosted by Dan Potts, um, who's not talking tactics or Arteta or game day football. It's literally different subjects every month. He's going to be doing it once a month. And tonight he's talking about the top five best Arsenal players ever. I was his first guest. I have a feeling that this legend will be his second guest. Um, and then at the end of each show, he lobs out a Get Off the Potsy to a certain person. I wonder who it is this week. Watch it at 10 o'clock. I'll be in the chat if you guys want to hang out with me um, and continue our football conversation. Brilliant stuff tonight, Kev. Thanks for traveling all around the country just to be here with us. We're going to dig into this a little bit more on Monday Madness. There's a lot that you and I haven't gotten stuck into on this. We've got top five talking points. If you guys have anything you want to add, email us the hybrid squad at gmail.com or hit us up in the YouTube comments. Until then, I will let the legends take us out. The legend take us out. And Harvey, get us up to 500 and beyond. 500 likes. Do a Vinny. There were a thousand people, Kevin Chaff. If there's a thousand people, you know we want minimum 50%. So get it up. You, if you didn't do it on the way in, please do it on, on the way out. Do a Vinny, eat it, nut it, caress it, punch it, or just touch it. No, bro, I don't want to have to broke you up now. Come on, everybody. Here's what I will say Sophie, thanks for being patient with me on my camel ride all over the country. <laughs> Squaddies. Thanks for taking the time and joining us, a thousand of you, etc. And for anybody who's watching after the event, thank you very much for watching. Hit the like button and leave your comments because we're going to deal with some of them comments as well. And what I will say is to all the squaddies, I love you and I hope you had a really good weekend after seeing our team do the business and make us proud. Squaddies, I salute you and good evening and at... Ease, everyone. I promise we'll do the ratings tomorrow night. We ran out of time. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.